Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. So glad that you're with us this morning as uh, we celebrate uh, uh, our Savior's birth. Um, today is, I guess we do a little bit differently. We are not using the screens. Everything is printed in your bulletin. Um, and we're just going to sing a lot. Anybody got objections to that? Good. Because I figured, I was like, you know, Christmas morning, I want to sing all the Christmas songs that I like. So I, we tried to pack in almost every single one. Maybe, well, maybe Mr. Schaefer up there may not like us for all the songs that we get to play for him, but uh, I think he'll do a good job uh, for us. Um, at this time, let us rise and greet those around us. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and he shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. O oh, come, let us worship me. You may be seated.
we make our beginning in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us take a moment to reflect on our personal sins. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called, ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
At this time, we go to God in prayer. For unto you this, uh, for unto you this born this day in the city of David, a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Glory to go in the highest. Let us go and see what has happened. And let us praise God and tell what he has done to all. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Please pray with me. May the words of our mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing to you, our Lord, our Rock, our Redeemer. Amen. Um, I, uh, last night we were, me and Laura, were sitting uh, after the kids had gone to bed, and we're sitting there, and uh, I thought it was funny. She's got on a Facebook page with all the seminary wives that we graduated with, and apparently, I guess, one of uh, my fellow brethren that was working that night said, uh, came home and was told the family and everybody, uh, was like, man, I got to think of a children's message for tomorrow morning. And without just missing a beat, the eight-year-old uh, little daughter says, why don't you talk about Christmas, Dad? And I'm thinking, man, I, I have to say, I'm so glad that uh, we had Katie where she was able to share her message with emojis. I don't know if I would have thought of that, but that's a really clever idea. I don't know how to put that into a sermon next, but we might have to do that. Man, a sermon without words. Oh, I got to think about that one. Um, you know, as I got to thinking about uh, this message, um, I kind of want to do it a little bit differently than um, 
kind of going to do it from a more of a Bible study kind of look. Uh, and so I'm actually going to have you open your Bibles. We've got two pages I want to look at. First one, uh, there's Bibles in front of you. And if you've got a Bible app, you're welcome to do that. We're going to look at Genesis chapter 1. And it is actually on page 1. Wow. It doesn't even have a number at the top. All right, Genesis chapter 1. Let's read this together. We're just going to look at the, the, well, the first three verses. Let's read that together. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and the darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God hovered over the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. That's it. Okay, well, you can, yeah, I know. You just want to keep going, right? All right, in those first three verses, God the Father's there, God the Son's there, and God the Holy Spirit's there. So let's look at them. Where is God the Father? Look, guys, I don't have all day. I got, I'm sure y'all got things to do too, right? Come on, there's parties we got to go to. Come on. Where's God the Father? In the beginning. Who? God. All right, so that's God the Father, right? He created things, right? Where's the Holy Spirit? Hovering over the face is right of the water right that's two now i'm throwing you through a loop where's jesus no jesus is not the light because the light was created so we can't do that one right because we know that jesus was not created oh so you can't do that one that one's out where is jesus he's right here well good i got confirmants over here that know what they're talking about what'd you say a word. How does God create? <coughs> Through Word. words. He speaks. He says, let there be light. And what happens? There's light. He's speaking and things happen. There's a wonderful kid's book, uh, Chronicles of Narnia, the whole series uh, by C.S. Lewis. And in the first one, it's called The Magician's Nephew. And uh, Aslan, the lion, who's kind of like Christ figure, comes into uh, the, uh, this new world, and he's going to create it. And he sings. And as he's singing, he creates. And the two kids standing there, they, they see him as he he talks and it's more of a rough and gruff. You start to see rocks come out and he's, it's more of peaceful and quiet. You see uh, the rolling hills and you see the, the, the grasslands. And as he is singing, things are created. Genesis chapter 1 is all God speaking, saying things and things happen. Ever notice in the Old Testament it says, and the word of the Lord came to whoever, fill in your blank, right? Who is that? It's Jesus. Now we're going to flip. We're going to go to the next one. I want you to go to John chapter 1, and you're on page 886. Eight hundred and eighty-six. Man, people looking in their Bibles at church. How cool. <laughs> okay, I'm going to read this first part here. In the beginning was the Word. Who's that? Jesus. Jesus. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. 
He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. We just saw that, right? He speaks. The words come out of the Father and things happen. And when this was, when John was writing this, uh, those uh, that were Jewish were sitting there going, yes, I totally agree with this. When they said, in the beginning was the word. Yeah, we knew the word was there. And the word was with God. And they're going, yeah, I get it. The word was there, right? He was speaking. And the word was God. Yeah, the word was God. We get that. They're up and down going, yeah. Uh, even the Romans were agreeing with this. Everybody was on board. Until you get to verse 14. I want you to look at 14. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. And the Word became flesh. The creating power back in Genesis chapter 1, the words being spoken become human. Become human, just like you and me. They become flesh in Jesus. He becomes the, the creator becomes part of the creation. He chooses to be subject to sin, just like you and I. To be under that. He chooses to take on uh, the humiliation of being rejected by the Father because of the sin that he carried of ours. That creative word becomes flesh. That's pretty cool. Now, I remember that old saying, uh, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words never hurt me, right? Uh, I don't know about you, but the word has a lot of power. This word has creative power. He creates. Now, I want you to think about this for a second. The word that created in Genesis chapter 1, who has the power to create the entire universe, then ends up Being Jesus, right? The same word, right? The word flesh. When Jesus speaks, things happen. When Jesus tells us to go and baptize in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and he says, you are created anew. Does that word have power? Yes. Because it's the same word that created it back in Genesis chapter 1. So when he says, you are new, you are my new creation, here, guess what? It's a reality. When he says, this is my body, this is my blood, take this for the forgiveness of your sins. Is it a reality? Why? Because when the Word says something, it creates. It has power. Just a little bit ago, we confessed our sins, right? And I got to say, as a called, ordained servant of Christ, and by His authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. I'm speaking for Jesus. When those words come out of my mouth for Jesus, when I say, your sins are forgiven, that's the word of God saying, you're forgiven. Does it happen? Yeah. 
because those words have power. Christ says he will take on our sins. It becomes a reality. He says that he will be with you through the thick and the thin. That's a reality. The Word. The Word of God that created in Genesis, that created the heavens, the earth, the whole universe. Became a child, became flesh, dwelt among us, and is still creating. It's in Him that we have and we are a new creation. And His Word has power. It's a reality because He has said so. You are His child. You are forgiven. And you do have a life of eternity with him because he has said so. Amen. Now may the grace of God which surpasses all human understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until he comes again. Uh, let us rise uh, for the blessing of the Lord. Before I give the blessing, I do want to give a huge thanks to all those that have helped out uh, over the weekend, uh, and also to Mr. Schaefer for playing all the wonderful hymns. Uh, I'm so glad that we got to sing all these hymns today uh, with you. Receive the blessing of the Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. <laughs>